What's up YouTube? My name is Luke and welcome back to my channel Celio's Network. Today we're going to be talking about the best cards from the new Pokemon TCG expansion Rebel Clash which came out on May 1st 2020. There are a ton of great and exciting new cards in this set but in this video I will specifically be looking at five cards which I think are the strongest and most impactful on the standard format of the Pokemon TCG. Now luckily we just had the Limitless Online Series Qualifier 3 play out last weekend so we have the results from that to look at as well as just my own opinion and remember this is an opinion piece so leave it in the comments down below do you agree with my top five cards do you disagree with them what does your top five look like for Rebel Clash let me know down in the comments below. Now before we get into the video I'd like to shout out my sponsor PotownStore.com the best place for you to get PTCGO codes be sure to use code CELIO for 5% off over there on all of your PTCGO codes. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Twitch so you can stay updated with my videos and live streams. All right, so let's talk about the most impactful cards out of the Rebel Clash set. We're going to be looking at five cards here. I don't have them ranked in any order. They're all really great. And I'm also going to be talking about how much they've been getting used in tournament play uh, in regards to the Limitless Online Series Qualifier 3, and also my personal opinion on them. Let's start off with Eldegoss V. So Eldegoss V is not very strong on its own. It's a support Pokemon uh, that's used for its utility. It has the ability Happy Match. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. Now supporter cards are very, very strong in our standard format currently you have things like welder boss's order professor's research even marnie can be very disruptive so there are a lot of great cards to fetch out of your discard pile with this card now it does use up a bench space it is a v pokemon but you're likely going to have other pokemon on your board that are liabilities like a deden agx or even a weaker attacker like bolton v uh, that your opponent can also knock out so i don't think eldegoss v is too huge of a liability but it does use up a bench space which can kind of stink in some scenarios and for certain decks that need a lot of pokemon on their bench but this ability is reminiscent of Versus Seeker, which got a supporter card back from the discard pile, but for an item. And that card was widely used in standard format, and it's very used in expanded format as well, where it is still legal. Out of the 149 players that made Day 2 of the Limitless Online Series Qualifier 3, which was the first major Rebel Clash event, Eldegoss V was in 52 of those decks, which is about a third of the deck so it was it was fairly popular it was played in the first place list it was played in many of these decks um so the card has already started seeing success and popularity but it was not in every deck or an overwhelming amount of decks and i think that could be like i said some decks need more bench space and don't want this eldegoss v on their bench but it's also not a consistency card for the early game and even sometimes in the mid game like cards like tapu lele gx and jirachi ex were in the past which searched your deck for a supporter card when playing it down now don't get me wrong i do think eldegoss v is a very strong card it's very impactful it's helping out decks that play welder and Immensely. It's also helping decks play lower counts of utility supporters like Mallow and Lana and Boss's Orders. So you don't have to clog your deck up with those, but if you wanted to play an extra one in a game, you have Eldegoss V as an option. So I do think this card is very strong. If I was ranking these five, Eldegoss V might be number five. But like I said, these are all impactful and strong in their own ways, and I expect Eldegoss to stick around in the standard format for a long time. Next up, we've got Boss's Orders, and I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this card, but it's a very strong card, and I expect to see it on everyone's top cards of Rebel Clash lists. So Boss's Order is, is a pretty simple supporter card. It simply switches one of your opponent's benched Pokemon with their active Pokemon. Now this is known as a Gust effect in Pokemon TCG, similar to Gust of Wind, Lysander, Luxray GL Level X, Guzma most recently. And these effects are so strong because we get to choose which Pokemon is coming up into our opponent's active spot, either to lock it there or knock it out or even just start damaging it and disrupt their game plan. This is very disruptive. It's one of the ways we can interact with our opponent. 
in the Pokemon TCG, and Gust effects have always been really, really strong. Now, Boss's orders specifically was seen in 121 of the 149 Day 2 decks of Limitless Online Series Qualifier 3, so this was played an absurd amount in copies of 1 to 3, depending on the deck list. And like I mentioned, it goes very well with the new Eldegoss V that we just took a look at. Boss's orders is actually going for $16, the physical card, just the normal hollow rare rarity on TCGplayer.com right now. It is a hollow rare supporter, and it is a very good card, so I'm not surprised to see it having a pretty high price point. Uh, maybe this will go down to about $10 or so once more are in circulation, but it doesn't surprise me that it's that expensive because this is our gust effect for now. Uh, we do have others like custom catchers and great catchers and Pokemon catchers, but boss's orders is a universal guaranteed gust on our opponent's Pokemon, whichever bench Pokemon we want to bring up. So it's very, very strong. I don't think it surprises anyone that it's being played so much and that it's being played to such success. 100% it's one of the best if not the best card out of the Rebel Clash set. Next we'll be talking about Scoop Up Net which is a really strong item card from Rebel Clash. Uh, Scoop Up Net reads put one of your Pokemon that isn't a Pokemon V or a Pokemon GX into your hand discard all attached cards. So anytime we have a guaranteed effect where there have been other strong effects that you either had to flip for or do something else for just like we saw with Boss's Orders um, it, you know it's going to be a good card. So Scoop Up Net, we've had other effects. We have Super Scoop Up in the format right now in Standard, and you have to flip for that to pick up any Pokemon, so it's slightly different. But Scoop Up Net is a guaranteed pickup effect. You can use this on things like Galarian Zigzagoon to place more damage counters. You can use it for the Mewtwo Aranguru combo, which has been getting to be known as the scoop up net engine and whole variants are being called like the scoop up net variants this is a very very impactful card from the new set and there's a lot of cool things you can combo it with we've seen players using the detective pikachu mr mime and the jirachi prism card along with aranguru from sword and shield base set uh, to, and using scoop up net to make this combo happen more efficiently and more consistently to get Jirachi Prism into your prize card so you can then take an extra prize with it. And again, we've seen whole variants of our archetypes been built around this and namely because scoop up net has come into the format. Now, there is a soft way to kind of counter Scoop Up Net with Mr. Mime from Team Up, which has been getting played in Dragapult VMAX decks to stop the opponents from basically healing damage that the Dragapult deck put down, but it also disrupts them, stopping them from picking up utility Pokemon to use them again. And we saw this Mr. Mime Team Up used in the third place list from the Limitless Online Series Qualifier number three in the Dragapult VMAX deck. And it was used alongside for scoop up nets. So it was a scoop up net counter and they're using four scoop up nets themselves because this this card is just so strong. Um, it was played in 65 of the 149 day two decks in the Limitless Online series qualifier number three. And while the while although that card count is definitely a little lower than boss's orders, a lot of these decks that the card was played in actually use it as four of copies as opposed to boss's orders, which is commonly seen is a two or three of copy in decks and it's also used in kind of specific builds of decks like i said it's used in scoop up net variants of certain archetypes and decks so it doesn't go in every deck but it is so strong when it is in the perfect deck and that's why scoop up net is one of my most impactful cards from rebel clash okay now let's talk about the big one you all know it was coming we got Dragapult VMAX up next. Dragapult VMAX was probably the most hyped Pokemon card out of this new set. Um, not including trainers like Bosses, Orders, and Scoop Up Net, but still I think it competes with those as the most hyped card. So Dragapult VMAX is a VMAX, so it evolves from its V form, and it also rewards three prizes when knocked out. It has 320 HP and is Psychic type, and we'll get into the support that Psychic type has, which makes this card so good. It has two attacks, Shred for one Psychic Energy to 
doing 60 damage, this attack's damage is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. And Max Phantom, for 2 Psychic Energy, it does 130 damage. And then you can put 5 damage counters on your opponent's benched Pokemon in any way you like. So the Max Phantom damage is why this card was so hyped up. You can do 130 damage to the active and spread 5 around on the bench, making for really cool turns where you take multiple knockouts, set up knockouts for next turn. And although on the face of it, this card may seem a little underwhelming, or at least not as overwhelming as the hype makes it out to be, but I believe this card is so strong because of the support that the type has been given. Like the new horror Psychic Energy from Rebel Clash that provides a Psychic Energy, and if the Psychic Pokemon it is attached to is damaged by an opponent's attack, you put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. This card is seen as a 4 of in literally every Dragapult VMAX deck, because it helps you put out some more damage to uh, supplement for the lower damage output on Max Phantom, even though Max Phantom does a lot of nice things with the extra 5 damage that you can put however you want on the opponent's bench. Of course, we can't forget that Psychic-type Pokemon have Mysterious Treasure as a search option, so Dragapult VMAX decks can have 4 Mysterious Treasure and 4 Quick Ball to boost the consistency of the deck, and Mysterious Treasure can also open up your deck to having a bunch of other Psychic Pokemon as techs, like Giratina from Unified Minds, which removes an energy, Mewtwo from Unbroken Bonds that can get your supporter back, Mimic You that can shut off GX abilities, and you can use that in combination with Max Phantom's damage counters there's just a lot of stuff that can be combined with dragapult vmax and a lot of things that make the psychic typing so strong and the perfect place at the perfect time for a card like dragapult vmax to be printed dragapult vmax has definitely had a huge, huge impact on the standard format of the pokemon tcg and i think it will continue to have an impact players are playing less jirachis in their decks because it's a weak liability for dragapult vmax to pick off and that's making decks potentially less Less consistent if there's less Jirachi, so it's causing a lot of shockwaves around the whole standard format. Dragapult VMAX also scares off a lot of single prize attacking decks or evolution decks that have to evolve from weaker Pokemon, and that's something I'm not particularly happy about. Although I do like Dragapult VMAX, I don't like that in combination with Altered Creation, the ADPZ decks, and now Dragapult VMAX having this spread damage mechanic on a really beefy Pokemon. Single prize attacking decks and evolution decks are just not in the best place right now, which I don't like to see, but I, I digress. Let's, let's move on. Before we wrap this up with my final card of the video, I want to remind you all to leave it in the comments down below. What are your top five most impactful cards from Rebel Clash? Let me know how far off we are from each other's lists. My last card is going to be Bolt Tund V. So admittedly, I was not too hyped on this card. I didn't think it was going to be that great when I first looked at it and when I first tested out some decks with it but I was wrong. So Bolton V is a basic Pokemon with 200 HP. It is lightning type and lightning has a ton of support right now. It's first attack electrify for one lightning energy. Search your deck for up to two lightning energy cards and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. Very, very solid attack. Um, I underestimated this card a bit because I was looking at it as a way to set up Picarom decks or set up Toxtricity decks or even set up its own archetype. And while I thought it would be fine as a setup for Toxtricity and, a, and fine setting up its own Bolt Ton V archetype, I didn't think it was going to be that great in Picarom, but I really underestimated its second attack Bolt Storm, which for a Lightning and a Colorless does 10 damage plus 30 more for each Lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. It turns out Bolton V is just a really great two prize attacker for this attack. And it was seen played in 46 different decks in day two of the Limitless Online Series Qualifier 3. And Picarom got first and second place playing copies of Bolton V. Uh, so this card, in addition to Speed Lightning Energy, which is another great card from Rebel Clash, have both really just pushed Picarom up into popularity and hype and success, which a lot of players didn't really see coming. I'm sure many did, though. 
Uh, so Bolton V is the last card here as most impactful. Like I said, these five cards were not in any order, but they were all on my mind when thinking about what has impacted standard format the most out of Rebel Clash. So I wanted to answer that question for you all today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And check out PoTownStore.com if you need any PTCGO codes. Use code CELIO for 5% off over there. I'd also like to mention that I do have a Patreon Patreon at patreon.com slash Celio's network and you can find more information on that my other social media and anything like that in the description down below have a good day and I'll see you next time here on Celio's network